as you know, I'm Jeffrey, Jeffrey Prince, Guru Jeffrey. I, I look after and help mentor people both in business and personally with confidence, low confidence building, self-esteem, etc. And I write quite a few books and articles as well. That's me. Yeah, good morning, everybody. Um, Frank Rogers, I'm a solicitor. Um, the relevant issue, I guess, for today is that some years ago, I got a master coach qualification through John Haynes International Coaching Academy. And that's something I wish I'd done many years ago. Hi, yeah, so Wayne, Wayne Farrell, uh, running an international training company, uh, training NLP coaching, etc., and I also do one-to-one -one business coaching. Uh, yeah, my name's Phil Ogden. I'm uh, essentially I'm a salesman. Um, I've been mentored by Jeffrey when he uh, he was brought in by uh, an old chairman of the company, and, um, and, and and set a lot of store by what Jeffrey says. But I've uh, I'm a salesman. I'm a qualified mortgage advisor. I'm currently a will writer and estate planner. Apologies to Frank Rogers. Uh, he'll have a low opinion of me, no doubt. But I am professionally qualified in those disciplines. Uh, and I'm also qualified to practice insurance generally. I've been uh, an associate of the Institute of Chartered Insurance. Uh, yeah, good morning everyone. Mark Rigglesworth, I'm a director at ERC Chartered Accountants in the city centre. Um, general practice, tax advice, accounts, the normal stuff. Uh, that's me. Good morning, gentlemen. My name's Amanda. I run Cougar, which is a marketing integration company now based over on um, Warrington. Oh, you've moved. I see. Right. I have. <laughs> that's great. Okay, excellent, excellent. Okay, many thanks for that. Now, the purpose of really this masterclass group is basically to try and assist each other, uh, especially what's going on at the present moment with so many people really concerned about the future. And all of us in one way or another must be a little concerned about the future and where we're going. So with that in mind, uh, what I'd like to do is to really look at what you think are the going to be the major blocks that are going to hold things up. Now, I don't know who would like to kick off. Um, the major block to uh, getting through this is people's um, dislike of change. Adversity, with adversity brings opportunity. And we, we all uh, should be looking to see how we can morph our business, um, whatever that might be, to, uh, to deal with clients remotely. That, that you can uh, sign things electronically, perfectly uh, legally in contract law. I think Frank might disagree, but uh, agree. I don't really know, Frank. Um, so we, we should be looking now to, uh, to, 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 to morph our business into a... Uh, something that can cope with this, which will, of course, uh, sadly for me, who enjoys being out and about and face-to-face -face meetings with clients in the houses, it uh, might result in us all doing business just like this. Uh, I'm currently writing business um, with the phone because our firm are completely behind the door when it comes to foreseeing adversity, and we should be doing this. Um, uh, and doing business like this because as a salesman I like to look in the in the, in the whites of the eyes of me uh, me victim I mean client um, and I, I like to see interaction between the man and wife that I'm dealing with to uh, to read body language so this is this is could possibly be the way forward which will be which will be devastating for me because I like riding up and down in the country but there you go um, so that, that is, the message is with uh, with adversity comes um, comes opportunity and grasp it ladies and gentlemen i think um i like what phil said but also at the same time i've worked like this for a long time i don't think it's about morphing your business i think it's actually about catching up with the times because a lot of people haven't kept in touch with marketing in terms of uh, social media websites and how quickly they you can actually move forward they've actually just kind of put that to one side and traditionally carried on with business 
Um, so I've been in business for 14 years and I've always used things like Zoom or something like uh, Skype to actually speak to my clients. I also enjoy speaking to clients face to face, but in actual fact, I don't think it's about morphing your business. Business is as normal. It's just about how you communicate with your current customers um, and catching up with the times, as I said, because a lot of people aren't really, you know, I, I still meet people who say to me, oh, social media thing. And you're like, yeah, it is. Um, so it, this is about opportunity and more opportunity than what people have. It is about, you know, people being worried about change, like Phil said, but at the same time, for me, I'm looking at, um, it, it's not necessarily change. This is kind of like business is normal. But for me, this is about how do I hunker down and make sure everything that I've got is actually even better than what it is currently so it's it's working on all the services and products that i have updating the website and doing all the things the housekeeping stuff that we don't generally get to do because we're working with clients so that's my take on it anyway right so hi everyone my name's helen adams and i am an empowered mindset coach and what i do is i work with women who want the clarity and the confidence to create their own business or to get their best results ever in an existing business um, I don't mind making a contribution, um, Jeffrey. I, I, I agree very much with um, what uh, Amanda said. Um, as a lawyer, I've been a bit of a Luddite, never heard of Zoom until this crisis arose, but um, love it uh, and getting to grips with it. That is going to transform um, how I do my business. Locally, I am head of our business development operation. And in terms of fee earning, I defend people on driving offences, and that work takes me all over the country. So having Zoom and being able to have face-to-face -face contact with clients who are distant from me, uh, and even to facilitate local meetings involving multiple people without having to go from Liverpool to Wirral or wherever, is absolutely transformational and so that for me amanda is actually a new skill um, the other thing i'm trying to use this time with is this is a new laptop that i bought um, for personal use really recently and it's got office 365 on which is uh, a bit of a mystery to me so i bought the dummy's guide to that and i'm gonna upskill myself so that i can use it and things like Zoom to enhance the way I deliver my business to the people um, that I want to help. And the last thing uh, I, I think I'm going to use this time for is to completely reevaluate my goals. The world has changed. It isn't going to change back totally, I don't think. And I think this is a good time to reevaluate your goals and reevaluate how you thought you were actually going to achieve them. So I'm starting with a blank canvas and saying, right, when we come out of this, all bets are off. How are we going to function? And I think we've got to be smarter, leaner, um, more efficient, more client friendly. Um, and at the same time, Zoom and things like social media allows you to keep in touch with people. There's a lot of businesses out there struggling at the moment, a lot of businesses failing and a lot of people in difficulty. And this sort of function allows you to have face to face contact with people who are otherwise isolated for medical or other reasons. Taking some of the things that all of you've said, because it actually ties in so nicely with this idea of uncertainty. Uh, some people have said to me that they're too afraid to be making offers, you know, from a business point of view. Here they are, they're at home or they, you know, their home office. And of course they want to still carry on and serve their audience. And in some cases, of course, what that means is that you've got to make an offer, right? If I'm, if I'm a business coach, I need to approach people and say, do you need some coaching through this time period? And what a lot of people have said to me is actually, they feel that if they make an offer, are they actually jumping on the bandwagon and are they potentially uh, perceived that they are milking the situation? 
you know, or they're taking advantage of the situation. And I would say totally not. And, you know, just sort of coming back to what you guys have said around this idea of social media and uh, utilizing things like Zoom, I, I think absolutely, you know, Phil, from, from your point of view, uh, yes, there's a lot of people that do need to catch up with the times, you know, as, as Amanda said, you know, a lot of people that, which is great what you said, Frank, uh, you know, yeah, you are, I've known you for years, very well educated man. Uh, you are taking the time to actually upskill yourself and, and learn something new, as you said, that, that maybe puts you outside of your comfort zone. And that's really what we need to do. We need to look at these times. We need to reevaluate. We need to speak to people like Amanda. Uh, we need to speak to people like Frank, like Mark. And, and by the way, Mark's the best accountant there is uh, because he's my accountant uh, and he does save me money. Uh, but the point is that we need to be speaking to people that are leaders in their fields, people that can actually help us through these times and not be afraid to ask and not be afraid to be doing business as usual. You know, right now, we've all given up this, uh, this morning to be able to make this available to our audiences and hopefully to inspire and to motivate them. And my call to action really for anybody that might be listening to this is, what can you do differently? What skills do you need to learn? Whether that's an upskill, uh, whether that's taking your existing practice or existing way of doing things and change it so that it sits with the times. You know, we've said 21 days. I dare say we're going to be in lockdown for many countries around the world. We're looking May, June, if we're lucky, right? And so therefore we have to change and it's okay to, to put out your offer. It's okay to put together something new there's maybe lots of things that you can do away, that you can do for free, where you can give information. Essentially, where you you're getting people to uh, to want to follow you, to want to get engaged with you, and then if they're interested and they think, hey, you know what? Here's somebody that I could really learn from. Then they'll approach you and 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 they'll want to do business with you. But we do need to change. Uh, but we also do need to still put out our offers. I don't know. What do you guys think? I agree with virtually everything that everybody has said so far. We're, we're moving into a, a future which, at the moment, none of us really know how it's going to end up. Um, certainly, a couple of weeks ago, if you'd have even mentioned the word Zoom to me, I'd have looked at you and, and queried, what on earth are you talking about? And I, I consider myself to be reasonably up to, up to speed with technology. Um, the last couple of weeks has proved to me that I'm completely wrong in that assumption. Um, as, a, as accountants, we, we are very slow in, in bringing in technology, pretty archaic in our ways. Um, and we now have all of our team working from home. Um, they are all using as much of the latest technology as we can possibly find. They're all using Zoom. We're having teleconferences with clients. Um, and that's the way uh, that I see it moving. As we move out of this, this mayhem, this chaos, then the, the business world as we know it will change completely. I really can't see how we're going to move back into our old ways. And it's a gigantic learning curve, or probably a gigantic learning curve for most of us. Um, probably excluding a man who's very much on the ball um, in terms of what she does and, and the industry she's in. But I, I really think that we've got to move forward and embrace technology without a shadow of a doubt. I see that Len has just joined us. Yeah, Len Rainford, I'll keep it short, the franchise specialist. So that sums it up really. Anything to do with franchising. I mainly help companies grow the business through franchising, but obviously involved in every aspect of franchising. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, and I agree with everything that the other guys have said so far. What I'm personally doing at the moment is I'm offering free 15-minute calls to people, so that's my offer, and then I'm getting some good feedback on that. But um, adding on to what the other guys have said, um, not only about talking to the people who are 
you know, knowing what to do, but also using this time to develop our intuition and seeing what we, we really want as well. Because um, sometimes we can listen to too many people and then just go away confused. But, you know, if we sat down quietly for like 10 minutes and just, um, you know, got some light bulb moments in the head, those are the things that work too. And we shouldn't be afraid to step out and lead as well, because if we're really convinced about something regarding our own businesses or how things are, the way they're going to go, which our business can help, we've got to shout about it. We can't be quiet and we've got to be strong in our beliefs and step up and lead as well. Okay. One of the things is, have you built in any form of strategy for moving along with this horrible situation? Because why I'm saying it, I was speaking to a, a client of mine yesterday. He thinks that possibly nine months time, we could be seeing anything up to three quarters to a million people stroke businesses self-employed going out of business if they do not plan at the moment yeah i just come in on 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 that one jeffrey i think you're absolutely right there are businesses out there at the moment clients that we are talking to who are on their knees um obviously they're getting the funding from the government at the moment but at some point that will stop tax rates will go up um, and they will have to find a way of actually existing um, on their own two feet. And it's going to be very, very challenging times for them ahead. And obviously, we're there along with other advisors to try and get them through this very difficult time. And we're, no, we're not exempt from this. Obviously, we lose clients. It has a direct impact upon us. Um, but they are going to be extremely challenging times for, I would say, further than nine months. I'd be looking at the next couple of years at the very minimum as the UK economy tries to recover from what will now be a huge debt burden upon um, UK PLC. And the only way that's going to be recovered is through additional taxes and in some way, shape or form, HMRC investigating every conceivable um, grant that has been claimed and ensuring that he's being claimed uh, in, a, in a correct manner. So there are very, very difficult times ahead. Um, people's retirement plans have been put on the back burner because their pensions are now worth a fraction of what they were worth three weeks ago. They're, they're difficult times for everybody. Yeah, if I can just add to that as well, uh, you know, one of the things certainly within the UK and you know, different countries have put in their own measures in place, but if we look now at getting 80% of your average profits over the last three years, as we know, many businesses, we run a lot of costs through the business. And so as such, you don't necessarily show as many profits. And now, if you want to be taking three months worth of average profits, that's great for you to go and live on, but that actually doesn't do anything for your marketing and all the other business expenses that still happen and that are going to happen for, you know, for the foreseeable future. So I think you, you're absolutely right. It's going to have a massive impact. And something Frank said earlier is, and Helen echoed it, it really is important to go and sit, sit down, reevaluate, and think, okay, so what is it that I want to achieve? How am I going to run my business differently? Now, uh, personally, as most of you know, you know, with the international trainings, I, I travel all over and different countries have been affected in different ways and however that's going to impact in the long term. But over the last few years, what I've done is I've started creating all of my courses as online courses. And the beauty of that, of course, in a, in a time like this, more people are at home and so they actually are looking at doing the online courses. Now, I know, Amanda, uh, I stand to be corrected, what I think I know is that you've got a course coming up doing some marketing uh, next month, isn't it? And, uh, you know, that's a, that's a huge opportunity. Uh, so I think we can all potentially, and I don't just mean us here on this call today, uh, again, to our audience, is actually learning again from somebody like Amanda, how is she going to be running her course and how can we do something similar? How can we 
we take stock of what's currently going on in our organizations and our businesses. It's probably uh, obviously going to be different for somebody like Mark. I, I don't know. I could even see Frank, you doing something in an online course and, and certain information, you know, uh, maybe totally different, like I said, from the accounting point of view. But what can we do to change this business, to take stock where we at and actually plan for the future and get rid of the uncertainty because it's in the uncertainty that people have the fear and then they have fear from that. They, a lot of people just want to give up. I mean, I don't know if you've seen some of the people that have committed suicide because either they got coronavirus or they were involved in family get coronavirus. Or, I mean, that's absolutely terrible. You know, it, it's terrible, first of all, for, for any person to pass away. Uh, but now if you think people taking their own lives and with uncertainty, I think that also can only escalate. So we really got to help people actually take stock. Where are we? And how are we going to plan for the future and do business differently? Yeah, I was just thinking there, if I may butt in quickly. Mark, there would be an opportunity for yourself, I would have thought, to do some form of a short videos of what they should be looking for, for the future and how to go about it. And I think, you know, this is where probably Amanda could help you dealing with this to set something up that is actually pertinent to your business because you know i've i've i myself have set up a, a small course for the end of this month a small workshop which is basically going to be covering skills presentation but over using zoom um so thank you wayne for, for mentioning that um yeah i do run my i have i have run my business uh, quite differently and actually when in in the previous years people have been like why are you working from home you need an office you need this that new and I was like nope this is how I need to work because I had the office I had seven people I grew my company to an agency and it just wasn't for me it just wasn't the right thing um, so I ended up kind of retracting moving back to just being me having outsourced um, people um, so I actually have what, what I call a membership where I deliver a masterclass every single month in my masterclass live on zoom I've been doing that for the last four years um, and we've only got a couple of people because marketing takes effort and a lot of people don't want to do the effort. They want to reap the, the rewards. They want to get the clients. They want the brand awareness, but they don't want to have to put the effort in on finding who their client is and all of that kind of stuff. Every single one of you could run a course. Every single one of you could um, create some sort of um, masterclass, some sort of even a, just a download where you start getting people's email addresses in. And, you know, technically, don't worry about the how, because I know Phil's probably like, eh, what? Um, I can help with the how, that's not a problem. But actually, I'm, I'm putting together some courses at the moment on how do I create my own courses? How do I create my own masterclasses? Because people are like, I need to pivot um, my business. And pivot, pivot basically means, to me, that you're actually going from here, which is what your core is, to something a little completely different. Not a little bit different, but completely different. Um, so we have to be very careful that we're not doing the complete shift because if we do, our audience who we currently have will be like, what are they doing? This isn't normal. So we have to be very careful on to, you know, if we're going to um, make any changes and go online, is that still congruent with the core message of what I do? Because if it isn't, it's going to confuse the hell out of my customers. If it confuses the hell out of my customers, what are they going to do? They're going to leave. They're going to go off and, and speak to somebody else. So your question, Jeffrey, was about strategy. My strategy is um, keep on keeping on. You know, I'm going to keep on doing what I've been doing. Um, there are a lot of people who are pulling away and saying, I've had, I think in the first week of all of this, I lost um, or had postponed uh, up to £7,000 worth of business um, over the next, next two months. There's some people who have carried that on because the seven, those kind of businesses, they were face-to-face -face VIP days and that kind of thing. Um, which is a bit of a shock, as you can appreciate, and everybody else has probably had the same kind of thing. But actually, it's like, okay, well, I'll just go all in on my masterclasses, and how do I do that? And I've even taken the masterclasses that I do live. So I've run a website um, workshop on how to update, not how to update your website, but 
what things do you need to do to your website? So that's next week. Uh, a couple of weeks after that is a marketing planning um, workshop. Uh, they're three and a half hours each. You get to go to the loo, do, you, do what you need to do, but you get a workbook and all of that kind of stuff. Every single one of you could do exactly the same thing, um, depending on the result that you want to get for people. So to create a strategy on moving forward, I would highly recommend try not to do something completely new because you're going to confuse your people. And as soon as you confuse your people, they'll just leave. And we're already having people not work with us. So we've just got to be very mindful that we stick on our path, stay in our lane, keep doing what we do, but just amplify that little bit more um, and just make sure that we're seen a lot more. So it could be spend more time on LinkedIn or spend more time on Facebook, go live, you know, do, do a couple of those things that actually terrify you, but in actual fact, it gets eyeballs on you, your brand, your offering, and all of that kind of stuff. I could sit here and talk all day about it. You guys know that I could sit and talk all day about marketing, but I'm not going to. If you want some help, obviously, I'm here, but I'm happy to talk about strategy if that's what you want to do, because strat if you don't have a strategy at the moment, you are going to sink, and it's as simple as that. Um, my husband's actually a business coach as well, and one of the things that he says is um, or is, he's been saying to a lot of people is that you um, buy your way into a recession and you sell yourself out of one so you have to be you know like Wayne was saying before if you're not making those offers you're not going to get the business it is still business as usual it's just that we're confined to our homes well I'm always confined to my home I actually work I'm sat this uh, little building is a shipping container at the bottom of my, of my garden. I had it converted a couple of years ago and I've always worked like this. So it's just about how, how to use what you have because if the budget is not there, we have to use what we have and how do we just amplify that little bit more so that people know who you are and what you do. So I hope that helps. One of the other things that I think will change forever is businesses particularly i don't know what mark's view is particularly in professional services where traditionally we're all office based we all have to have space we all have to have a desk and we all have to congregate in one place what i've learned since i've been working at home is that i absolutely do not need the office nine to five i just do not i need it maybe for client meeting rooms I need it maybe, but not now with Zoom for professional colleague meetings and even printing and scanning with the right kit. I could set that up from home and maybe only go to the office um, for personal client meetings. I'm going to offer all my clients the free consultation they get. I will offer them that now via Zoom because it's much more personal. So I think businesses will look at the huge overhead head that premises are and say, Do you know, we've, we've worked leaner and neater at home, most of us, for a month, two months, three months, whatever it is, why are we carrying these overheads? And I think we will change how we work dramatically. Yeah, one of the things I'd like to say, if I may, is like Helen uh, and possibly Amanda, I give a free half hour over Zoom to anybody who wants to chat things through. And again, I, like a lot of us, like to see the whites of the eyes of the person I'm speaking to, looking at the body language, listening. And quite often, I'll be honest with you, and maybe some of you are the same. I've actually spoken to people, looked at the body language, listened to what they've said, and at the end of it have said, I'm sorry, I don't think I can help you. Now, I prefer, I, I'm probably the oldest of you all here, but over the years, one thing I've learned is that if you are not comfortable with the person you, you are with or wanting to deal with or looking at his morals, his ethics, or her morals, ethics, then it's better to walk away now than pile up a problem for the future. I, I like to see people face to face, meet them, find out what they're really like. And I can give you a, a classic example of that that happened to me just early this year. Um, I'd had a, a, two long conversations with a guy from Spain 
he's British, he has a place in London, has a place in Spain. And I, I sent him a proposal, etc., and all the rest of it. And then I got a phone call from his secretary in Spain saying, uh, Joe's in London um, on Friday, and he said, can you go and meet him? This was Friday. She rang me on the Friday and said, uh, can you meet him on Monday? And I straight away, I went, you know, now I, I, I have Mondays and my days at home. I, I've worked in my office now at home for seven years now. So I'm used to working at home. But I said, yeah, I'll go down to London and meet him on Monday because I had no other appointments. And I went to see him. And he took me for lunch. Then he took me to his factory in, down in Epsom. And I had a good day. He came back at night. And on Monday, he accepted my proposal. Now, when I went over to Spain, which I did in January, and I met his secretary, Christy, she said he'd already spoken to about three of your competitors. The reason he chose you was because you went down to London to see him. That was one of the main reasons, uh, because he met you face to face and he could see what you like and, and so on and so on. So I'm a big believer in that. Um, going back to what you were saying before, um, uh, Mark and um, some of the others. I don't, pure coincidence, probably, I don't know if I'm psychic or not, but uh, at the beginning of, um, of March, I decided, oh, well, actually back in February, I wrote in pencil right across my diary, uh, no appointments, and that was this week. I'd already put it in my diary, no appointments this week, because there are two or three things that I'm planning to do. Um, and one of those things, funny enough, was to do online courses. Um, I've been talking about it for ages. I've been thinking about doing it for ages. Um, I've written two books about franchising. And now I want to put those two books in, into online courses. Um, and I'd already done that. I'd already penciled that in to do that this week. As I said before, I'm used to working from home. I've worked from home for now for seven years. And... Um, I allocate certain days to have meetings in Manchester or London or wherever, uh, but I'm at home at least three days a week. And I think what people are finding now, particularly with things like Skype and Zoom, is that, you know, you, like you just said, um, Frank, um, you, can, you can run 75% of your business, you can run from home. So I think, I think there's a big opportunity there to, and it, and, it, and it will happen with a lot of people it's going to change, you know. If you go back to, you know, the, the last big recession we had, yes, companies went bum, lots of companies went bum, but the ones who survive will be the ones that change and that adapt and that, that in, introduce technology and, and do things, more, do more online than they're doing now. As you've already said, you can cut your costs tremendously by not having an office. You know, again, a prospective client in Manchester the other week and. I went to see him, what was supposedly his office, I thought it was his office on King Street in Manchester, and when I got there, it was just the communal bit in, at the top where we had a coffee and a sit down and an armchair and had a chat. And there's a lot more and more people now doing that. So I put quite a few posts out recently, and I think, you know, one of the things I've put in, there's, there's going to be opportunities out there. It's not all disaster for a lot of companies. There's going to be some big opportunities out there. But you've got to adapt and you've got to change. I think that is that is what's going to happen, isn't it? You know, all of us now realise that there is an opportunity for each and every one of us to deal and move our business forward. And Helen, I know that you do a lot of your business using uh, FaceTime Live or, 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 or Facebook Live, which, by the way, I have tried to do. I tried it with Wayne the other day, but I will have to speak to you about that uh, because I tried something and it, I couldn't switch it off, but I've now sorted out how to do it. But it is an opportunity because I think, now I may be wrong here because there are experts among us, but if you put something out on Facebook, as I try to do two or three times a day, am I correct is if you put it live on Facebook, people can then make comments and join you. I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that because I think that is another golden opportunity. 
yeah you can um you can do it live where people join you or you can do it live and not actually share the live if you don't want to there's a new thing which is absolutely stunning so if you have a zoom um account you can actually go live in facebook through zoom so you can record it um and actually invite people like this into zoom but actually um propel it out on your page as well which is just amazing it's absolutely amazing but you have to have the pro version for that unfortunately yeah. the free version you get up to 40 minutes the pro version you, you are allowed to then um you know put it out on go live through zoom uh, to facebook and to youtube as well so if you've got uh, uh, youtube following you know you can get people out there as well um zoom will bring well zoom already have a chat so if you look at the bottom there should be a chat button yes, yeah yeah we yeah. can actually mm -hmm. talk to each other we can private message each other as well mm -hmm. um but what you can do is when you're um when you're on zoom and you're pushing it to to your page or within a group you can you have to have two different pages two different screens so that yeah. you can see facebook and what's happening there on on in live and facebook and one in in uh, zoom as well so it can get quite complicated but actually it's it's worth doing because if you record through zoom it's better quality than doing a facebook live because facebook actually compressed the video so it goes a little bit blurry so it's better to do it through here and um, plus if you are going to do a master class any of you record it download it and you can either uh, download it into the cloud or onto your desktop but then you can trim it um you know um, and top and tail it with a, an intro outro that's something that you could sell you know well, so not only you do it live you can then say okay well if you weren't able to make the live recording here it is for 5 10 15 20 50 pounds um it's just <laughs> another way of, of putting yourself out there you know one of the i mean one of the things that is going to result from all of this mayhem will be that and we've started doing it now having zoom uh, conferences with clients um, and it saves so much time in terms of travel time I live in Southport and I, I work in Liverpool it takes probably 45 minutes to an hour to get in and come back from the office so I'm immediately I'm creating an additional one and a half to two hours of, of working time each day without it actually extending the day any further than I already do and having those sort of discussions with clients as well um, in circumstances which are forcing them into it is making the penny drop in terms of how much more productive they can be and potentially how much more profitable they can be without additional effort um, they're finding that obviously there are savings to be made they're working from home their, their travel costs are diminishing to near non-existence and to have those conversations with them and to warn them of the future impending increases in taxation, which, as I said earlier, it is, has just got to happen, then they are now thinking about how they can become more profitable. And that's where, from our perspective, we can give the guidance and enjoy giving the guidance of this is what you do, this is how you do it, and have conversations face to face via Zoom, um, where you can give them proper, good, professional guidance, which at the end of the day is what, from my perspective, is what I trained for. I trained to be able to save people tax. I trained to be able to ensure that their profits were optimum. And in the last week or two, those conversations I've had with clients, because some of them are desperate, I have actually thoroughly enjoyed, I've thoroughly enjoyed getting up in the morning and thinking, I don't need to drive into Liverpool. Thank God I haven't got all the traffic to deal with. This, this particular meeting has gone from initial, oh God, am I going to get depressed again? Um, to now everybody's now getting upbeat. And instead of showing the problem, we, we're looking at the solution. Are you, uh, as an accountant, are you uh, fairly convinced that, that the markets will recover, that the pension fund will uh, get back to where it might have been, or what? Um, I certainly hope so, because I, I have a number of investments which I would like to see recover. <laughs> uh, that's purely from a personal point of view. 
Sure. Um, I can only go on, on, I, I remember Black Monday um, only too well. Um, I was sitting my, my final ACA exams at the time, and I remember the news coming out at lunchtime thinking, dear God, those few shares that I had invested in, trying to be a smart aleck as a trainee accountant, yeah. have just collapsed. Um, will, they, will it recover? The markets have a, a very short memory. Good. And, and I, I haven't read a single article yet from the professional press that is suggesting they will not recover. There is, there is a difference of opinion as to how long it will take. Um, it's not going to be an immediate bouncing back, as I think some of them initially thought. But it, it will. It will come back. And anyone who has got a couple of years beyond to retirement, um, then I, well, I think I'm probably, probably in the same boat. Um, uh, no, it'll, it'll come back. The stronger companies will see the way through. And this is where um, the conversations I have with clients and you, you tell them over and over and over again, it's the old adage, keep some money back for a rainy day. And some of them listen to you and some of them don't. And those that don't are now beginning to feel the pinch because it's, they, it's they are down. struggling. Yeah, it's it, yeah, it, it certainly is piddling down. Um, and this is where you need to get across to clients that they, they have to manage their affairs mm -hmm. in a way that gives them some sort of buffer zone for a rainy day. Yeah. Looking what at it from my doing? perspective now as a salesperson, uh, one of the things that my objective is uh, in face-to-face -face sales meeting is making the client feel comfortable. And going to clients' homes, which is what I do. You could make up a short PowerPoint video of your own, which over Zoom you can be talking to a client. Then you could actually show them bits and pieces of what you, you know, what are the benefits for me? You know, WIFM, what's in it for me? And you can show them a quick 10 second, 20, 30, 40 second video, a uh, uh, PowerPoint, and then come out of it. That is one of the beautiful things about Zoom. Mm. Uh, well, okay, Jeffrey, but um, you, you've known me, you might have forgotten about me. I, I am the technophobe. Uh, the original works technophobe, uh, but I'm always prepared to learn, Amanda. Yeah, uh, and that is a brilliant idea that Jeffrey's just put in my head, and maybe it wasn't his, but I don't care whose it was. But that's how I run my masterclasses. So I use Zoom. Um, on the bottom, you should have a button that says share. You can share your screen. So I share my screen, which is a PowerPoint presentation. I'm then put over to the right hand corner, top right hand corner. Right. All of it's recorded. Um, so all of us could create presentations and put it out there. You can create on a Facebook what are called watch parties. So you upload a video and then you can, you can play the video in your group or on your page. Yeah. There's so much to do, but I know that you're saying that you're a technophobe. Don't worry about the how. This is one of the things that I, I'm seeing at the moment. Everybody's worrying about how do I get business? How do I do Zoom? How do I create a course? Yeah. And because they don't know how, they're getting overwhelmed and they're getting stuck and they're getting yeah. depressed and they're getting a bit like frustrated yeah. and angry because they don't know the how. The how is somebody else's job. My job. My, my job's the how. Right. But if you can come up with a great presentation in a PowerPoint, um, in a PowerPoint um, that's branded well, that makes you look good with all your charts and, and, and stuff, you'll be able to deliver that to your customer. Like, you know, I've recently, I've, when was it? Yet yeah, last week, I sold um, a three and a half grand um, project through Zoom. So, right. Len, one of the things that you mentioned about traditional, um, I've written it down here, traditional marketing. Traditional marketing, the face-to-face, -face, the personal touch, I am all about that. And the reason is because my dad was a maitre d'. He ran six dining rooms. So, when I was born in Bermuda, I, was, I grew up in that hotel. So, customer service and customer experience is my, like, main thing we can actually take traditional and put it onto digital we just but, have to work out how we do that and another part of my job amanda is is that i deliver um talks and seminars to mainly uh, parents and carers of vulnerable kids 
uh, about how to protect them financially with trusts and wills and stuff. Uh, and I've got PowerPoints. I've got, I've got them. I actually I help develop them. So I'm not quite the technophobe that I uh, crack on to be. It was just how to uh, marry the two things where my knowledge lacks. And it might just be my knowledge. Uh, but Phil, that's a cracking idea. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm into that. Phil, this, as I said before, this is a game changer for everybody. I'm no IT whiz by a long way, but Zoom is something I knew as soon as this happened and people were saying, this is what I'll do. So I've downloaded it. I've got the pro version, spoke to a very good business contact of mine who's expert on this. He gave me a lot of good advice and shared screen and taught me tips and that sort of thing. It's non-negotiable, I think, given this crisis that we have to get out of our comfort zone. And you've said several times, you know, I'm a technophobe, not having a go at you, but it's almost like a self-limiting belief. You know, oh, the, the more you say that, the more you'll convince yourself that you can't change and acquire that skill. But when you accept, as we all have to, that we have a problem with business and how we're going to conduct it, and when you then realize Zoom and this technology is the solution, the goal, the revised goal has to be, how do I get that skill? And, okay. and you know, once you take away the belief, which, which I could share with you, I mean, some of these things scare me, but when you realize how vital they are, why can't we get that skill? Of course we can. People, you know, it's like going back to school, isn't it? Teachers will say, when somebody says, oh, I'm going to be a footballer, or I'm going to be a musician, or I'm going to be an artist, and the teacher will say to a child, oh, you'll be no good at that. You're just Johnny Jones or something. It's a self-limiting belief which then conditions you for the rest of your life unless you actually break out of that and say, no, I'm going to change and I'm going to get that skill. And that's what I'd urge you to do. And talk Frank, to somebody like Amanda. Frank, can I, can, I just, can I just say that it's all this business about me being a technophobe, it, it's self-deprecating. I have retrained professionally four times since my 50th birthday. Uh, so don't, don't believe that I, I say, oh, I can't do that. I do, and I embrace, and I retrain. The thing that, uh, that I am uncomfortable with doing is doing anything without i've got the 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 knowledge in here um the, the, you know as well as i do that will writing and estate planning currently is unregulated and one of the reasons that stopped me coming into it was the fact that it was unregulated i enjoyed being a mortgage advisor because it was very highly regulated uh, so I, I i like that comfort of knowing that what i'm doing is is correct so i've reached no, so to talk over you, Phil. I, I do apologise. I no, just no. know that there are a couple of people who actually had to leave the call at half past eleven. So oh, if nice. anyone needs to leave, if we can just ask that person or, or whoever does, just maybe to make a final comment. Uh, what is sort of suggestion, a key takeaway for you from this, and a suggestion for our audience that they can take away and benefit from? Can I just just quickly say, relating to what Phil was saying. Um, I used to do the same as you, Phil. I used to say, you know, oh, I'm not digital at all. But behind the scenes, I always kept up to date with most things. Uh, I had a business for 17 years. My son did most of the technical stuff. But, you know, I, I knew what was going on. And a <laughs> very quick example, I sold the business and I had to stay under the radar for about 12 months. Um, and, but I'd already planned to set up the franchise specialist. So I decided to build myself a website and I built a four page website and um, it took me about three months. Um, but when my son came to see it, I said, um, he didn't know I was doing it. I said, I've done this website ready for my new business. What do you think? And he said, oh, it looks all right, that dad. And I went, I built that. And he went, F off, you never did that. <laughs> said yeah I did so you know another good example is what we're talking about now on here and you can share things um, when I wrote my books I got a book mentor 
because although I think I know everything, you know, I thought I'd better get a book mentor. And we had one face-to-face -face meeting and the rest of the meetings were on Skype. And I, I would send her on an email, I'd send her my, so say the first three chapters and we'd share them on Skype so that, you know, she could sort of point out things and we could go through the page and say, oh, why don't you say this? Why don't you do this? Why don't you change that? So it's very much the same as this, where you're saying you can, you can put a PowerPoint presentation on. You can do it on this, you can do it on Skype. And it's not, you know, I, I don't think she got frustrated with it, but, you know, the next meeting a month later, you know, I'd say, oh, shit, how do you do that? I've forgotten how to do it, <laughs> you know. But gradually you learn. And, it, and it's, it, you've just got to do it at the end of the day, you know. Yeah. Guys, can I just interject? Um, I'm really sorry, but I've, got another call waiting for me on zoom as it happens um so if you would forgive me i i need to leave the meeting now but it, it's been really useful um i've appreciated all the input that everyone's given i'm really interested in what amanda's had to say in particular um some very interesting stuff there so um stay safe all of you and um hopefully we'll uh, we'll speak shortly Excuse me. would you be happy to be joining another one next friday mark Absolutely, no problem whatsoever. Excellent. I'd look forward to it. Thanks, Jeffrey. Cheers, everyone. Cheers, Take Mark. care. Bye, Mark. Bye. I think Helen's had to go as well. Looks like it. No. Oh, yes, she has. Yes. Okay. Now, as as Wayne has just said, it, it, it it's turned half past eleven, and we wanted to try and box this into about an hour. Uh, but I'm personally uh, happy to carry on talking to anybody who might want to talk. Jeffrey, can I um, just chuck in my closing comment? Mm -hmm. there's, there's an expression I've always liked, which is the difference between ordinary and extraordinary is that little extra. And I think this is the time when we've got to find that. And businesses, you know, including me and mine, have got to look at this situation, analyze what the problems are we're facing, what the causes of those problems are, and then write down solutions, because there's always solutions. It, it could be using Zoom, it could be all the things Amanda's talked about, and then mm -hmm. prioritize these solutions, make them your goals, and then if everybody made sure, no matter how far out the comfort zone that takes you that every day you at least take some steps towards achieving the major goal you will come out of this with greater self-esteem greater self-respect greater okay. skill and people around you will think wow this business is so smart look how it's evolved and i think this time is vital what what i'm doing with this time is i am making sure I have a routine so I get up as if I was going to work. I start work at the same time I was going to work. I clear the table, set it up as a workstation. I go for a walk, which I'm about to do now. I go for a four or five K walk every day at the same time. And if you apply those sort of principles, I think we will all come out of this better despite the financial issues, which we can't control, but we've got to come out of this better skilled, better equipped, with a complete warts and all look at how we've functioned hitherto and how we can change, because the world isn't gonna go back to what it was, it isn't. One of the things I've always been a believer in I've always got myself up in the morning and always got ready for work when I'm working on the computer. I can't say these days that I'm in the office, you know, in my study at nine o'clock in the morning. Uh, you know, it might be 10 o'clock, you know, but I get through a routine. And that routine is something that is part of the ABCD and it is discipline. And it is disciplining ourselves to stick to the routine, that is the way we'll always move forward. And it is the people who say, I can't. I think you've all remembered the things that I've said. I hate negaholics. 
I hate people who all the time are negative. And in, a, in my book, books that I've written and the various things I've done, I'm always saying, keep away from negaholics. They will drag you down. Energy vampires. Uh, just for those people wondering what the ABCDs are, uh, I mean, obviously we guys know, but uh, I wrote an article yesterday. It was actually uh, three letters of each of A, B, C, and D. Uh, as you may be aware, just some things that people can implement within their business and to help motivate them to uh, to be moving forward. So taking action, having the ability to do whatever it is that they're choosing to do, having the right attitude to do that, uh, totally employing balance. There's a time for fun and there's a time for work, right? Uh, sticking to the basics and having an absolute belief that you can achieve what you need to do. Control what is controllable, know what's controllable. And those things that aren't, uh, how can you mitigate that? It's important to have clear communication, both with ourselves, so how we uh, talk to ourselves, as well as how do we communicate with family, with staff, with potential clients, etc. And having a total commitment and a dedication, actually, uh, to be achieving whatever that is, but to serve our audience and our clients. Being disciplined, determined, and decisive in action and behavior. Absolutely. So the ABCDs. Uh, with that, I will also love you and leave you. And I think really through these times, it's important for people to deal with the uncertainties, become clear, crystal clear on what their goals are. And as I always say, take MAC action, massive, appropriate, consistent action yeah. to achieve whatever that is we want. Smashing. It was so nice to see you all again. And uh, really look forward to chatting next week if, uh, if that's available to all of us.